Okay, a few practice questions around radioactive decay. So I'm going to walk you through a few examples of uh, what this looks like. So, for instance, if I'm told I have protactinium-233 and it undergoes beta decay, that uh, I'll ask you to be able to figure out what that reaction actually looks like. So, again, protactinium-233. So this is 233 mass. It's protactinium, so Pa. And look up on the periodic table and find that the number of protons that protactinium has is 91. This is going to go through beta decay. So I, you remember what beta decay is. Beta is an electron that comes shooting out of the nucleus, right? So I'm taking a neutron and shooting an electron out of it. So uh, that this has really negligible mass and a charge of minus one. And I want to figure out what's going to be left over. So something else is going to be left over. So I'm going to worry about two things. I'm worried about the mass. So the mass that I start with has to equal the mass that I end with. So mass is always conserved. So I have 233. And I have to worry about charge. This is a little bit tricky here. So the charge on this side is negative is 91. The charge on this side needs to add up to 91. This is negative, so this needs to be 92. Okay, so when I add these two together, I get 91, which is what I started with. Now I'm going to go on the periodic table and look up to see what that is, and that's uranium. And this is one of the ways that uranium gets generated through the decay of protactinium. Interestingly, protactinium doesn't last very long, so it has a half-life of 27 days, meaning that every 27 days, half of it decays into uranium. And uh, uranium has a half-life, so this is 27 days, and uranium has a half-life on the order of 160,000 years. So <laughs> if you wait 160,000 years, half of the uranium that you had at the beginning will decay into something else, and half of it will still be there. Um, so what happens is we end up accumulating, right? So protactinium decays and accumulates in, in uranium. Okay, so, so this is a beta decay. So um, another type of thing that I might, I might ask you is to tell you that, say, well, franconium, that that is made by the alpha decay of something else. So franconium is a product and it's produced along with an alpha particle and the question is what does that come from? So this is the way they want to tackle this. Right? So I'm going to say well franconium I would have to tell you the mass, let's call it 221 and I look up on the periodic table discover it has 87 protons or has an atomic number of 87. So that is produced as a decay product and, it, and also produced an alpha particle with that. So my alpha particle is this. And what I'm asking you is, well, what did we start with? So it's a different type of problem. So in this in this case, I told you what the what we started with and what was the particle being produced, and you had to figure out what else was produced. And in this case, I'm telling you what was produced along with the particle that came, and we're trying to work our way backwards to figure out where that came from. So let's take a look. So I'm going to do the same idea. So I'm going to make sure that my mass adds up and my charge adds up. So in this case, I ended up with a mass of 221 and 4. So whatever I start with must have had a mass of 225. I ended up with a charge of plus 87 and plus 2. So I must have started with something that had a charge of 89. And I'll look up on the periodic table and discover that this is actinium. And this is the decay of actinium. So it goes through this uh, decay where it shoots out an alpha particle and produces uh, 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 franconium. The um, interesting thing, this has a very short half-life. This is 4.9 minutes. Right? <laughs> so uranium, 160,000 years, right? It's around forever. Protactinium, 27 days. And this one is 4.9 minutes. It doesn't last long at all. Right, and decays into something else. Um, actinium is around 10 days, it turns out. So um, a, a couple things, hopefully you're getting the idea of how to write these out. Uh, let me do, uh, do one more example. Let's see, uh, well, let's, let's, see what, uh, let's see what this turns into. So the question is, uh, this is gonna go through alpha decay and then what, what's left over? So after 4.9 minutes, half of this is gonna disappear. So I'm going to start with this. 
and it's going to go through an alpha decay. So it means I'm going to write an alpha particle here. So this is, I like to write this as a helium nucleus. And I'm going to be left with something else. The question is, what else am I left over with? Well, let me add this up. So again, the mass I start with has to equal the mass I end with. So I started with 221. Four of it got kicked out in this alpha particle. So I must be left with 217 for a mass. I start with a charge of 87. I lose an alpha particle, which has a charge of 2. So I must be left with 85. What's 85? Um, Astatine. Astatine. Um, so uh, it was astatine. And this, <laughs> this has a half life of 0 0.032 seconds. <laughs> so it doesn't last long. Um, anyway, so this is what I'm asking you to be able to do. So it, I might give you something that you start with and, and uh, tell you what particle is produced. Um, I could give you the thing that's produced and the particle and ask you where it came from. And uh, the third thing I could do is I can give you two elements and ask you what particle must have been produced. Uh, anyway, I, I hope that's helpful and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.